to the papers now, see what the headlines are across Nigeria. And I have with me in the studio broadcast journalist, Funke Treasure. She's here. Nice to have you join me. Good morning. Thank you. Good Great. morning. Good morning. And uh, we also have a public affairs analyst, Oladi Ndiario. Uh, Oladi Ndi, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Same here. You're welcome. Very Great. greeted her first last week because she's a woman. The same thing we teach today. They said ladies Don't first. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> they, said, they said ladies first. So. Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now let's uh, start from uh, Daily Times. Daily Times newspaper says bandits threatened to kill 17 university students. Bandits threatened to kill 17 university students. It's really troubling there. And uh, that's Daily Times. Daily Trust says five months after bilateral talks, Nigerians' uh, shops remain shut in Ghana. Five months after bilateral talks, Nigerians' shops remain shut uh, in Ghana. Forty more businesses closed. And we are working with our people. The federal government is saying this. We beg to feed. Traders are revealing all of those. That's uh, Daily Trust. From there, let's go to the leadership newspaper, and it says uh, it's focusing on insecurity. Uh, shelving partisanship, PDP offers to help APC-led federal government. All right. Shelving partisanship, PDP offers to help APC-led government. Or led federal government, okay. That's uh, on the political side of things. Leadership newspaper. Blueprint is where we go next. And Blueprint... Uh, is focusing on insurgency. He says, uh, Bauchi on red alert as gay dam residents relocate to four local government areas. And uh, 19 killed in Benue stop grandstanding, collaborate with federal government. Tv youths tell Otom, uh, that's the governor of Benue State. Upscale security personnel, equipment, PDP urges uh, federal government. And Buhari OK's National Center for Control of Small Arms. All right, that's uh, the Blueprint newspaper. The Punch is next. The Punch newspaper is next now. And uh, it says, Outrage as Benue herders murder 19. Bandits vow to kill 17 university students. An ACF, Otom Middle Belt Forum, others express anger, say federal government lacks capacity to stop widespread killings. <laughs> A band is threatened to kill 17 abducted Kaduna undergraduates today after collecting 55 million naira ransom. Uh, they, demand, they demand 100 million. It's really a troubling situation there. And certainly, uh, there's also the picture. This picture has gone viral. The one you see on the front page of the Punch newspaper uh, shows that uh, someone has shot an elephant. Uh, that's a poacher, I guess in uh, somewhere in Ogun State and that uh, they've not been able to find who did that but uh, it's really troubling this picture went viral uh, since uh, this happened all right we'll see we'll look at certainly look at uh, the issues around the university students all right news direct is next news direct says greenfield varsity abduction bandits demand 100 million naira ransom threaten to kill students Kogi local government chairman of doctors demand 100 million naira. Security operatives to clamp down on politicians, links to banditry and others. Okay, all of those on the front page of the, Ni of the Nigerian News Direct. The Guardian newspaper is next. Guardian says state governments face historic liquidity crisis. State governments face historic liquidity crisis and plan to spend 86 percent of yearly total revenues on recurrent bills withdrawal of cbn's budget support threatens survival and some states can't pay debts in 50 years says uba all right uh, these are issues that nigerians would like to know i guess so uh, we'll talk about this too if time permits us daily sun is next 100 million naira ransom bandits threaten death for varsity students today panic heightens among parents and others it's really a terrible time let me say uh, this is daily sun these are some of the things we'll start from these discussions the nation newspaper is next 
Abductors threatened to kill 17 students after 55 million naira ransom. And kidnappers give today as deadline for 100 million naira payment. Parents are begging. Really troubling. All right, that's the nation newspaper. Nas uh, national economy is the last one we're looking at now. National economy, OPS seeks uh, reevaluation of forex policy on repatriation of export proceeds. That's on uh, national economy or organized private sector. Okay, uh, <coughs> gentlemen of the press, this is a very troubling, very very <sighs> troubling. Uh, situation and the headlines most of the headlines are focusing on the uh, ultimatum given by the you know those who abducted students from the Greenfield University uh, threaten, threatening to kill uh, the students if uh, 100 million naira is not given to them as ransom I wonder what you say about this thank you very much seeing it from the perspective of a parent who has a child a under there. It's really um, terrible. I said it before that we just allowed new words into our lexicon. Bandits, kidnappers, hoodlums, and all of that. The truth is that all of these are connected to Boko Haram, and I call them all terrorists and criminals. Now, <coughs> if you look at the amount of money that we had expended on fighting Boko Haram, because that was the origin of the crisis we are facing now. If the money had been well utilized in terms of the correct weapons being acquired and the adequate training being offered, by now, Boko Haram should have been almost history, if not entirely history. But what happened? Monies will be allocated and then they will be stolen. That's why we have some chiefs of staffs being sent to jail and some um, negotiating their way out of jail. Now, all of this that we're seeing, they helped us to put the Nigerian government and the people of Nigeria in position of weakness, whereby we have to now begin to negotiate with criminals. When the American, an American was kidnapped in Nigeria, they didn't waste time negotiating with them. They put up the best that they had, technology and men, flew down here, annihilated the kidnappers, and rescued that one person. That is a country that is on top of the situation. They also knew what to do and did it. But for us here, Governor Erufai has been saying, like everybody, too, I had that same mindset that when you pay bandits, kidnappers, and criminals, you are empowering them, okay? But the question is, as against this, what other options do we have? Because for us to say they should go to hell, we must start strategies and game plans that are effective, efficient, very timely to and deliberate, which by now should have been deployed, and then we will not be where we are. But because of the point of weakness where we are, we have been reduced to the level that we have found ourselves. Remember that they threatened to kill three. To kill, they killed three. They threatened again, they killed two. These are a different hue of human beings, very mindless. So if they could kill five, they will not bait an eyelid to kill the rest. And that is my pain as a parent. Even after collecting Remember some also money. that a parent had to pay 20 million naira to rescue his son. So, in the face of the fact that, yes, we are saying we will not pay, what timely okay, and proactive game plan do we have to rescue the children? Hmm. Government may not come out and lay the cards on the table, but we cannot feel it. Hmm. All right. Uh, Funke, the point is, it, it really, just, just seeing it as a parent, I just imagine what parents of those children uh, will be going through at a time like this, especially seeing... Uh, uh, headline of this kind. Now, the point there is, if someone was saying sometime recently that if we are able to get information from these people, they have threatened somehow, and then we have the information, and everybody's knowing what is going on there, and all of that, 
they, sh they should be somewhere. And the intelligence should be able to lead security agents to say this is where these people are and this is how to get them and all of that. But we don't see that happening somehow. Yeah, you know, for me, I think the problem with Nigeria is our politicians. Mm. They politicize everything and waste time politicizing these things instead of taking action. When you have a presidency that speaks more than the president and just speaks, just talking, talking while calamities are happening across the country, this is what you get. And then when you, if you look at the cumulative sum that Nigeria collectively has paid for ransom, you see that this has become an industry. Mm. So you nearly not fault a government that says, I am not going to negotiate with bandits. Because really, that's the right thing to do, to not negotiate with them, to make the place uncomfortable for them to continue their you know, evil trade. But you see, I've said two things, to not negotiate and then to make the place ungovernable, un, 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 uncomfortable for the bandits. That we have not done. Instead of making that place ungovernable, the presidency issues all kinds of statements that just depress the people keeps depressing the people all the time. And then there is no immediate action. I was listening to uh, an, an interviewee on one of the stations recently, and he was saying, no, they're, they're not going to invite uh, any army, any foreign country to come and help. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. So what precisely are you doing? We, by now, we, I thought the president not the presidency. We're okay. used to the presidency talking and nothing happens. <laughs> if they're not condemning, they're doing this. So it just, that's neither here nor there. But by now, I thought the president, after meeting with the U.S. team and asking for, uh, what's it called, to be relocated Africom. here. Africom. to to come to Nigeria. You think that there are certain steps that will have been taken by the president. He will have said, this is what I'm going to do to do. This is what, what, what I'm going to do. He hasn't said anything. The, the, one of the states in the north was crying out on TV yesterday, I don't have anything to, to secure my state. The way Nigeria is configured, a governor cannot do anything without the central. So you still have to get um, approval from the center. From, from Abuja. With all that we have gone through, we have experienced, Abuja, the federal government, has still not changed anything. You have to get to them first before you get security you know, intervention in your state. So you then have these people capitalizing on our, uh, I, I don't know if to call it inertia, because we're just not, we're talking, we're, it looks like we're moving, but we're not moving. Mm. It's motion move without movement. That's what we, what's happening. Every day we're talking on TV. We're talking on radio. People are talking. Thank God PDP has decided to weigh in on this. <laughs> uh, um, Mr. Pio Saim has decided to say something. People are now beginning to see that this... This is leading us but in, to in, in the eyes of Nigerians, parents. all of those are just suggestions then, here and there. So, so the, the onus still falls on the leadership of Nigeria to do something. Mm. Everyone is talking. We can all talk. We don't have the, 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 the right. We don't have the wherewithal to take action. The only place where action can be taken is at the president's level. Even the governors are wringing their arms. We don't know what to do. We can't do. We can't. So it still falls back to the president, who's supposed to be the father of the nation. What can the parents do? They've already uh, mustered a certain amount of money, but the bandits are saying we use it to feed them. So then you have to look for another hundred million. Where is the Kaduna state government going to get that? And if the government, if the, go the, the state governments continue to give to the bandits, continue, mm -hmm. when they ask you, you give today, what is left, what will be left for governance? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a very tight corner <laughs> because <laughs> the, the, the point there is in a situation <laughs> like this where. Before, before we forget, mm. we need help, no doubt about that. Okay. But asking that Africom should be relocated here. Mm. has wider international consequences. Yeah. We must get that. But that was, that was where Nigeria saw these things from no, initially. Not, from, because I, because I, I recall, I recall, need, I recall, I recall that. Let me say it again. Okay. We need help. 
and most likely from America. But relocating Africom hmm. here will have wider international consequences. Let's get that very clear. So I would rather they limit the issues to our challenges, okay? Uh, you know, and then come up with, with the way forward and bring that to be. The, the, see, the consequences you're talking I, I about, is it, is, it a, is it a product of lack of trust because the, maybe Nigeria fails? That? Because Nigeria and the United States have been friends for so many I years know, since our I independence. I know what I'm saying, okay. and this is not the right platform to okay. expatriate on that. All right. I must say with that. Now, I support her sentence that all of these things have been politicized. But I, I, my position remains that because we have cornered ourselves with a very um, pedestrian way of confronting terrorism and criminal, criminal uh, say, occurrences, we have found ourselves at the point, weak, weak, weak point. And to that extent, if I have the 100 million naira, I will easily release it. Hmm. I don't want any more debt on our hands. How do we begin to kill our future when we surrender the lives of our youths to bandits and criminals? Even if they don't have money, who are the people that will benefit from whatever development they may want to put in place? It's unfortunate. But we found, I've, I've said it here that we're always hugging our challenges, our problems, instead of confronting them you know, frontally. And that is why we are where we are today. Mm. And if nothing is done, it's going to get worse. There was um, a it's case. worse already. It, it, it's it's as bad. It, it, it's as bad already. Three, me, some four guys, me, three guys, arranged to kidnap a six-year-old boy, son of a neighbor, and they were asking for ten million naira. So the man could only muster one million naira. They got the one million naira and still killed the boy. You know these stories are everywhere, and. I am tired of picking newspapers and all you listen to, I mean, read, uh, deaths, murders, and all of that. Mm -hmm. When you tune in the radio, it's the same thing. Television is the same thing. Yeah. So, so someone, someone said, this is a face. Is that, it? Yeah. yeah. Well, someone said so. And I, I, I was like, yeah. this is a face? Ah, you know, but what do you see? Do you see it that way? I think that when you get to the bottom of the bottle, mm. the only way you can go <laughs> is to go up again. Exactly. I would love to be uh, optimistic mm. this morning that um, it really can be worse than this. I've read where somebody said in six months this is going to happen to Nigeria. I, I disagree. Somehow mm. we will wriggle out of this. But we cannot wriggle out if we do not have leaders who can call themselves to order. I like the fact that uh, Mr. Smart Adeyemi has said something. It's kick-started something mm. at the legislative level. However... But several senators have been talking, even in the... Uh, yes, and, and but they will, come to, well. they will come okay. to a point where <laughs> they will realize that talking alone oh. will not solve the... <laughs> they will not need to take action. And in this wise, if you have someone, if you have a nation that is spiraling into, um, into an end and you have a leader who's not doing anything about it, it will be time to invite this leader to find out what exactly the problem is. And then knowing the problem, you take the necessary actions. I would not say more than that. When you have governors who cannot say to their overall uh, leader that, look, this is the... This is the final point. We cannot go beyond We've this. reached the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, because if you look at what's happening now, it's cutting across uh, different levels, uh, uh, st uh, uh, social statuses. Mm -hmm. So you find that it's not only the, the, the children of the poor that are being kidnapped, who are being kidnapped, but you're also having big people also being kidnapped. Children of the elites are also being kidnapped because they are the ones the, who go to the private schools, maybe I should private let universities. You know, the ML of South South. As one of the children in Greenfield. Okay? Now, Robert Clark, SAN, who said from his readings, as an elder statesman, experience that he was giving us less than six months to that's collapse. That's what I just alluded to. You mm. said it now. Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to fault him because, as, 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 as I mean, even last week, I still said it here that what we are seeing is not helping at all, it's looking extremely hopeless. 
You know, it's like what happened yesterday, the one that happened today will be worse than. Mm. And then it's expanding now in horizon. So that, that's, what I, that's what I said, look, things have already scattered. And the earlier we get our games together, again, the ball is at the uh, door of our politicians. And I'm wondering it's why they are politicking, forgetting that if things are not done speedily, we will not be here. We, sorry, we may not be here in 2023. Whatever ambition anybody may have may no longer be possible because everything might have just collapsed. And when that happens, you don't know whose head it will you know, drop on. So, we, we, I, I, you know, thank God that Funke is now talking that uh, we should stop talking. She was always saying we have to talk no, and talk. And I kept saying, we have talked enough. See, I said that we have talked enough. Yeah, 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 now we need action. They don't have to have waited till now to have called the president to order. No, they are. It's been late. They are late. And I'm saying before Friday, I will expect an affirmative action from the National Assembly because their mission basically is to keep the executive in check. In check. So if they fail to do that, Nigerians will be asking questions. And they should know that the people voted them. They are representing the people. Mm. Not all of us can go and begin to speak on that mm. platform. But they are there. So they should speak for us. You know. Look at the number of I mean of uh, killings, death, they are kidnapping there. It's terrible. Look at the Binwe incident it's too. Terrible. We can't continue like that. It's terrible. Look, look at what happened here last Monday. I read the report on it and I was scared. Why? Because with Okada riders, they easily amass. Didn't you see the mass for Okada too? With any small thing, they easily amass in their large numbers. Wrecking havoc. I am glad that Lagos is on top of it and then we are getting assurances regularly. But the question is, must things continue this way? No, we cannot afford it. Therefore, sanity has to begin from the top and then percolate downwards. We've been talking of constitutional reforms. Nobody is talking. When you call the governor CSO, I have told you, it's just a borrowed group. What CSO that does not have it's control of officer. a troop or, or some band of policemen, if he made any, makes any request, the, the, the CP will still push it up from the you know, area command to where regional, whatever, they get to the IG. A lot of things will have gone wrong at that time. Lagos State government spent more money on policing in Lagos than federal government. Mm -hmm. Quote me anywhere. And it's been so. So states that have the capacity now and the resources to have their own police should be allowed to have Things have gotten to that point now. You know, right. for you, you know okay. what I want to quickly Before we say. Before we get more than do, yeah. you know what the, I want to quickly say also is that this is not the time to start legislating on bleaching creams, hmm. uh, as we've seen our legislators <laughs> doing. This is the time to do the needful. If those children are killed. Hmm. It's not going to be business yeah. as usual no, yeah. no, again they, for those no. in governance. It may, it may cause a we, national we, we agree because it will so bring, I, I, it, it it will look like a new happens. dimension to things. If, if and that happens we, yeah. today, we, we pray it doesn't happen. By Remember I told you, yeah. from what they have done so far, those band of criminals are of a different hue entirely. All right. And we, we can no longer afford to play or toy with them. Mm. We have been cornered. We have they have our, our balls in their hands. Mm. Let's we, we want to hope. Set up posterity. Yeah. Well, I did, we want mm. to hope and uh, we want to hope and think and imagine that uh, the security agents are on top of the game regarding this. <laughs> at this level, at this we want to hope. Uh, That's we want to hope. Yeah. Uh, no, we want to hope. That's well, the thing. Where's your hope coming they, from? They, they have always given Nigeria hope that they are on top of this the is issue. Where so the where they is, brought us. Mike, let, you let, are here when we were told that Boko Haram had been annihilated. Yeah, let's, let's, let let's, me remind you mm. that with the event that happened in, in Kazare last week, Boko Haram is less than two hours from, to yeah, from uh, to Get Abuja. very clear. Yeah. All right, let, let's leave you here and uh, hope for the best one way or the other. Uh, Oladi India Rio, Same thank here. you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very I much. I really for appreciate you. Me. Funke Chasha, thank you very much for coming as well. Thank you for sharing breakfast with us. <laughs> thank you.